Uh, Jono, the Blues obviously heartbreakingly missing out on the finals this season. Have they done enough in this trade period, do you think, to get their list in shape to be finals contenders oh, think next they, year? I think they see their list in pretty strong um, shape as, as it is, Sarah. So they, they include their Blake Akers, who I think adds pretty good. Well, he adds great run in terms of and keeping width on the ground. Blake Akers plays, plays nice and wide, but part of a structure that allows that allows that to happen, and I think that'll continue at, at Carlton. He gets back and helps defence, which which they need, but then he's also that, that first kick out of defence as, as well, and he gets the ball nice and wide, but then starts to bring it back in. So so I think he's a good addition, Blake Akers. I think they, they're pretty happy and pretty stable at the moment, the Blues, on where they see themselves, and now it's a natural progression on whether they can take that next step and play finals footy next year. They're getting pretty urgent, you know, if I was the Blues. I mean, traded for Shera pretty heavily, traded for Saad pretty heavily. Free aids of Hewitt and, and Williams. You know, Hewitt was a boom. Williams still got some scope to improve. Um, this is their time. They've got the Brownlow medalist. They've got the uh, Coleman medalist. It's time to play finals. We're, we're in for a ripping year next year because we're, we're obviously there's about 10 sides we've mentioned tonight that we go, this is going to be you know either they their, their year or they're mm. going to be better. And they're already playing finals. So that's why that that's why it's a massive <laughs> step for this for this footy club to jump a few. It's going to be great to watch. Richmond Carlton in there. Well, it could be the season opener. It could be the grand final replay. And, of course, you think Port Adelaide versus North Melbourne, maybe with the Horn Francis stuff in round one. So, look, there's going to be some struggling teams, but round one might be pretty tasty. Oh, can't wait Ooh. for the fixture to come out indeed. All right, what about the Bombers? Brad Scott late to the job as Essendon coach and wouldn't have been able to have a great deal of preparation for the draft. There was talk around Jordan Dugowie early, but it looks like he stamped that out and they've played a pretty conservative hand. They certainly have. So Aaron Francis departs. Sam Wiedemann comes in uh, with Brad Scott, uh, obviously having a role for him there. They want him to play key forward. The interesting one is Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody. So they could keep him. Uh, or they could allow him to go to Fremantle. I think a really ruthless club would say, Anthony, mm. we played you a really good contract. Um, we understand you might like a change of heart, but you know we'll work with you and we'll support you. You'll stay here. If you want to play football, you play with us. We're desperate for elite talent. We're desperate for small forwards. You come in and you've been inspiration to the Davey twins who will come in as father-sons. And, of course, I've got four as a really elite early pick. So much change in Essendon, a new coach, he'll be a new captain. Um, I, I think the pressure on this Essendon list, and I think it's a really good list, I don't think they need to do too much necessarily. Guelphie, Redmond, Ridley, Snelling, they've all played yep. that 60 to 80 games. They're going to get better. The under 50 gamers of Draper, Perkins, Corball, Jones, you'd expect them to grow substantially. Cox. So there's not a lot, there's not a lot missing. Their gains are in the coaching, are in the systematic uh, defensive output of this group. If they can't get that right, they'll be the same as what they've been for years. But I would assume that that'll be the first port of call for Brad Scott. Looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> you All right. be looking forward yeah, to it, Sarah. Absolutely. Yep. All right, let's chat about the Western, uh, West Coast Eagles for a moment. Uh, some big-name retirements, so some ageing stars departing their list, and Rioli was probably the biggest name in terms of their ins and outs, Ralphie. Have we mentioned Junior Rioli, David? Yes, we have. I think you <laughs> may well have. So the cap issues haven't really cleared. They didn't have a crack at Luke Jackson. They turned two into picks eight and 12. They lost their excitement machine in Rioli, who, look, if they'd given him one extra year... They would have kept him. They didn't have a crack at Luke Jackson. There's not going to be a lot of hype about West Coast in the next summer. Yeah, that's OK. Four picks inside 26. You've got to start somewhere. It's funny, you know, you can't do anything right when you're down the bottom of the ladder. So Hawthorne purge their older players, they'll get smashed for that. The West Coast hang on to theirs, they'll get smashed for that. So you just make your own decisions and you wear your lot. I think this senior core group have the ability to do what Collingwood Senior Corps Group did last year. Mm. So why can't McGovern come back ripping fit? Nick Natanui do the same. Yo, uh, Shuey, Hearn, all these guys come back and say, well, we've seen this work. We take the load off that next level of player. Oscar Allen. I, I know. Th yeah, we haven't seen Oscar <laughs> Allen. Your boy. We, we haven't seen Campbell Chester. We haven't seen... Uh, we've seen fits and starts of Tim Kelly at his best. So yep. I, I think there's scope for this group to be a 10-win team next year. Now, whether they get there or not, well, that, we don't know. But uh, the, the, the top four picks inside 26, they're not going to have to do the heavy lifting early. Mm. So I, I, I think it's a, just the start of a rebuild. Let's just, let's just back off on the anger and the angst. This is a team that won a flag four years ago. Perfect full stop for me. I, I couldn't agree more. And I think that's the first time tonight we have, David, but <laughs> I couldn't agreed. agree more. Let's get back to the dogs. <laughs> hey, speaking of September, it's hard to see Fremantle not being a major player next season with, obviously, semi-finalists this year, but with the acquisitions they've been able to get in this trade period. So it cost them a little bit. They moved on Meek, they moved on Darcy Tucker, Griffin Lowe, Blake Akers, but they want generational. They want game-changing players. They certainly had to move on Rory Lobb as well. They missed out on Jeremy Sharp, but they got Luke Jackson in, and they 
got Jagger O'Meara, who, let's face it, he's behind Brayshaw, Brody, Fife, Caleb Sarong in the pecking order. GWS said, oh, we might play him at half forward. It's, not, it's a nice name. Where does he fit in that midfield? Oh, he fits in for me. I, I love what Fremantle have been able to, to achieve um, over the last couple of years in their build. I think their, their back six is as, as good as any back six in the competition structurally with the talls. When they're, we showed this year when they're all healthy, the three of them, um, that they can stand up because they've got the run and drive off the, off the ground level as well and unbelievable ball use. You had O'Meara in there with his, with his class. It's just, a, it's just another little tick and bonus to what their lineup already looks like. They had a humdrum second half of the season for me. The first half was really good defensively as a football club and, and, and it sort of fell away after that. Any time you can put a player of Jago Miller's quality in, into, your, into your team, and I think it'll be at half forward. Mm. They've got a young midfielder that's going really well. Um, it's been a slow build. 15 and a half wins this season. Uh, they're ready to go. They're ready to launch for me. I think their next two to three years will be seriously promising. And I like the fact that they're prepared to get a Corbett, who's a little bit speculative. Mm. You know, after the success of Will Brody last year, um, I, I think that's the way to go. If you can find a diamond in the rough. You now we talked a lot about Peter Wright this year at Essendon. If you can find one of those types, you just never know. So let's wait and see. And we will wait and see on Melbourne round one. We cannot wait to see how Simon Goodwin deploys his two ruckmen. It's going to be one of the watches of the season, Jono. I, this is fascinating. It really is. A, I think we all wait and see what structure will happen on the bench, whether the uh, the medical sub will stay or whether we go to to five on the five on the pine. And we'll we'll see what if that. I think that'll help in terms of this structure that that Simon Goodwin's um, looking for. What does Simon say, Kingy? Simon says tab. Uh, <laughs> they, they are a clearance-based team. They are. And, and I love it. I, I think if you're going to be a contested possession, uh, clearance-based team, you've still got Oliver in his prime. He's going to be there for quite some time. Mm. Petrarca, Viney. Uh, they, they'll run healthy at the end of the season. There's no doubt about that. They, they were a poorer version of themselves uh, through a final series. But I, I, I think... I think that if you're going to have an asset like this, maximise it. Ability mm. to get Grundy bang. The, the use of Gorn now will be really fascinating. They're going to have the ability to, to basically do what Geelong did last year. Gorn takes a tap work, goes behind the ball, Grody becomes a roam, roaming ruckman. Yeah, he, we, we've seen him be all Australian. He gets high-volume uh, disposal. So I, I think it's a terrific acquisition. I'm excited about what, what Melbourne can offer next year. Uh, only five ruckmen have been all Australian since 2016, only 11 nods in total. I've got eight of those blo eight of those nods, you know, two of those ruckmen out of five. I mean, how can you go wrong? It's going to be a pretty special thing to watch, isn't it, as a footy 